Hey guys, Katie Heller here with KidsCanReadAndWrite.com. Today I want to talk to you about letters and sounds. More particularly, how to help kids learn their letters and sounds when they're just not sticking. What can you do to help those kids who just can't seem to remember them? So the good news is there are five things that you can do to really help kids who are struggling to learn their letters and sounds, particularly if they're your own kids, but it works for anyone's kids. So here we go. Number one, this is a lot for kids who have any kind of visual processing issues, auditory processing issues, or memory issues, which are kind of the hallmarks of dyslexia, right? Um, kids who have dyslexia tend to have these short-term working memory issues and also processing issues. And so when you have memory or processing issues, one, you have a hard time learning a lot of individual kind of rote facts. It's just hard to get those things to stick. Um, two, if you have visual processing issues, uh, it's really hard to tell the difference between like a B and a D or a P and a Q, right? The lowercase P and Q or even the Q and the O because look at the circles. All that's different is that little mark or with the M's and the N's. They're almost the same. So people who have memory issues and processing issues have a much a uh, taller mountain to climb up than those who don't. You know, if you don't have any memory or processing issues, you look at these a few times, you know, whatever, growing up and people mention them here and there, and you just kind of get them and it's not a big deal. But if you're dealing with serious memory and processing issues, it becomes a much bigger deal. So that's what we want to talk about. Those kids who are just really struggling to get these. I mean, these techniques will work for anyone, but they really help the kids who are struggling. So one thing, this is just too much information at once. So if you're dealing with somebody who's just struggling to remember their letters and sounds, maybe you only do like one, two, three at a time, right? You start with three and you only show them three and you go over them until they can say them back to you. And then you can add, you know, three more and then mix them all together. But you just do a little bit at a time instead of always going over all of them, you just, you know, really drill like a few at a time. And that can really make a big difference because now the brain isn't overloaded with too much information. Because if you have memory issues, once people go past basically two, three things, um, you tend to forget them. So that can be with a lot of kids with ADHD also. The memory is a hard thing and that focus concentration. So if you go over too many at once, they all get forgotten. So try narrowing it down. Just learn one, two, three, you know, three to maybe five or seven at once. Like I would start with three if you're really struggling and then maybe um, five if you're just a little bit struggling. Um, but what you want to do is not just know A, B, C, D, E like this, but you want to help your child know them out of order. Okay, that's really important. So what letter is this? That's a D. What does it say? Duh. What letter is this? That's a B. What does it say? Buh. You know, and go out of order, not just letting them see it. Mix them up, move them around, you know, get letters that you can put on a table or whatever. Pull out three at a time. Make sure you move them around. They can recognize them anywhere. Um, but you also want them to know, you know, the sound. So make sure letters and sounds are going together. So I know this says B and, or this is a B and it says B. I know this is a D, it says D, C, K, that kind of thing. So um, remember, first step is just do a few at a time so you don't overload the memory. Once they really have shown you that they can name those few, wherever they are, scatter them around on the table, pull them out, surprise them, play games. You know, once they can tell you they know those few, well then add a few more until you can build up to all of them. But you don't wanna just throw them all out at once because too much. And that 
Also be patient when you're doing that. Make sure that you're being very understanding, even though you just told me this is C and it says K. Don't be surprised when I forget that a few seconds later. It, I promise it's not that I'm not trying or don't want to know it. I literally cannot remember it if I have short term or working memory issues and I have not committed this to my memory yet. So don't be surprised if I just told you it's two seconds later and now, you know, it's forgotten again. Don't be surprised by that and don't be angry by that and don't, you know, point fingers. Just say, oh, that's C, it says K. And take the anxiety out because here's what happens. If you push it and you're like, you know that, I just told you that, you're not paying attention, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're going to raise your child's anxiety and then guess what's gonna happen? They're really not gonna remember because now they're all buzzing with anxiety and their brain is not free to learn. So you want to do the opposite. If your child's having trouble learning, you want to make it relaxed. You want to make it fun. You want to make it a good time because kids learn best when they're having fun and aren't worried. So the more you can make it a game, something really fun, something with prizes or whatever, that's going to stick a lot better. So just take it down to three, two, whatever's manageable. Start with one. Doesn't matter, you know, build and quiz and all that, but do a few at a time. That's number one. Okay. Number two, um, one of the things that's really helped me help kids learn their letters and sounds very quickly is to help them associate letters with things, to help them see pictures in the letters. And also to, um, to, to, it helps with retrieval. So like for a, you know, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make hand signals that look like the letter. So when I'm working with a kid who's really struggling, we're going to make hand signals. I'm going to say, this is a, right? I'm going to show them a, and what does it say? Ah. And so I'm going to have them do a, ah, making a hand signal. Um, for B, I might say, oh, B has the two big bellies. So let's make two big bellies. You know, this is B, B. And we're going to move our body with the letters. Now, this is really good for kids who have ADHD, who need to be, you know, physically involved. It's good for dyslexics with retrieval because now I've got something to build a story for. And remember that also ADHD and dyslexia often go together. Same with autism. So, we have a lot of overlapping things and the more you can bring in um, different modalities for learning, the easier it's going to be for them. So, um, you know, B, B, and I'm just doing that with these right next to each other right now. I like starting with the capital and small letter together so they can get used to what they look like together. So I'll just write three on a sheet of paper even and go from there. And then I'll just point out of order, you know, and we'll do the hand signals. This is C cuts like a, a, the handle of a cu -cu -cu cup, right? Or I pick up a cu -cu -cu cup like this. So C cup or cup. So I'm going to help them see, you know, the picture with my hand. I'm also going to help them see a picture when they look at it, right? So that they can see that hand picking up the cu -cu -cu cup where they can see the bu -bu -bu belt sucking in the belly. I'm going to make associations so that when they see that from now on, oh yeah, the bu -bu -bu belt one, right? B -bu, right? A lot of kids, it's just a memory issue you have to get over, um, but it's often mixed with processing also. So they might not hear it very clearly if they have auditory processing. They might not see it easily with visual processing and you have to help them recognize it and remember it. So make pictures um, out of the word. So D, I might say, oh D, that's da 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 daddy after he ate a really big meal and he's got a big old um, stomach sticking out. D for da 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 daddy, you know, and then E, I might stick my three fingers out like the E sticks, right? E, eh, and um, I'm just going to do that for the 
This one, the eh, I'm going to say, oh, that's Granny with her hand around her ear saying, eh, eh. Um, so I'm just going to come up with whatever I can come up with to help them. Um, for the lowercase d, I might go, oh, look, there's da 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 daddy's face. He's about to climb up the ladder um, to work on the roof. That's d da. Um, for the b, I might say, oh, this is the ba 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 back. And that always comes first would be but. But I'm going to give them little ways to remember what's what. Um, F, I often say this is a f -f -f flower and it's all wilted because I am famous for not watering my flowers. So they wilt. So I always tell the kids about that. The F is the f -f -f flower that's bending down because it's wilting because it didn't get enough water. You know, you just come up with whatever makes sense to you um, that helps your child see it. So the G, I might say, oh, this is the ga 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 girl's face. Here's her long hair hanging down. Um, for the H, I don't know, I got erased a little bit. I'll just put that back there. For the H, I might say, um, this is a ha 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 horse with the horseback rider's back sticking up. Um, I, the ice cream falling off. Eh. J, I'm dipping my finger in ja, 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 jelly. So, you know, just whatever you can come up with. K likes to gobble up letters. Ka, 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 ka. He says as his mouth moves. Um, L, lick up the licorice stick or the lollipop. Um, M, I always say, is like mountains. N is like a na -na -na nut that got cracked open. O, the mouth wide open. Aww. But you see, I'm just coming up with silly little things, but it helps them keep it straight. Remember, it has some kind of, you know, vision and memory, a story attached really helps. So that's number two is help kids see pictures. And remember, you can do that with hand signals. And you can also do it with pictures, like there's the apple with the stem. You know, whatever you need to come up with. P, we've got the pup 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 pan handle first, so we don't get burned by the pup 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 pan. Um, Q, I would say here's the qua 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 queen's face, and here's her straight hair down because she doesn't want to get tickled by it. So she's different from the ga 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 girl right? Because she won't curl her hair under her chin. If she curls her hair, it's going to be away from her face because she doesn't want to get tickled by her hair and start laughing when she's talking to everyone. Whatever you can come up with, right? Ra 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 rainbow for the R, R ra rainbow. Um, a snake for the S. T ta, time out. You know, whatever you can come up with, that's what you want to help them with. But come up with a ways, like you, I always say, gets punched in the stomach. Oh, why'd you punch me? Um, v is a v -v -v vulture with his wings flying in the air. And if they don't know what a vulture is, look it up. Show them a picture to help that memory. W, that's the wo 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 waves. It says wa for waves. X, k -s. Make sure they understand. It's like a k and a s put together. K -s. And then why I'll do my arms up. Why? Why do I have to do all the work? Why? Yeah. Um, and Ziza zip. You need to zip it up, right? Ziza. So that's number two is help your kids see pictures in the letters. Um, so if you really reduce it and just do a few at a time and then you help them see pictures in the letters, usually that's enough to help. Uh, but let's go over some more because just in case you need more tips, I want to give them to you. So three would be to make it tactile. Make it so they can feel the letters. You could do sandpaper letters. You could um, have them trace the letters in shaving cream on the table and say the letters name and sound as they do it. Um, what else? Uh, anything that gets their fingers involved, right, helps them feel it. You could like Play-Doh letters, right? You could make letters out of Play-Doh. That'd be fine. Um, but anything that's tactile, that gets them touching, you could have them just trace them and say the letter sounds while they do it. 
Um, so some kids need that tactile ability. And again, the hand signals, right? That's very tactile because they're using their hands. So those are all good things you can do. Um, and for kids who like, you know, really want to be outside, go outside, learn them outside, do them in the dirt. You know, do you can do the finger in the dirt. You can do finger in a sandbox. You could do um, a stick in the dirt. You know, whatever, but have fun. Um, remember, you want to bring down the wall of resistance. So that means you, you know, want to make this as fun as you can, as low stress as you can. Um, just have a good time. This is your kid, you know, have fun. So that can be really fun. The kids really like doing fun things like that. So what's number four? Um, four would be to create memories. Uh, in some ways you might do that would be arts and crafts with letters and sounds that are really hard for your child to get. Maybe you make an, uh, some kind of craft with it. Maybe you make alphabet cookies. You make a whole bunch of like nothing but uh, D's that day or whatever the hardest letter for your child is or a few hard letters and you talk about oh can I have the D one you know so I can make some more D's or oh can I have the P cut out so I can make some P's yeah you know, and talk about it and 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 trade them and use them all that um, maybe you do letter puzzles together and you talk about oh can you find where this Q goes I don't know where to put the qua you know whatever and you just Make memories, have fun, play together. Um, also reading alphabet books, making sure you're saying the letter's name and sound as you read them. These are all things that you can do to build warm fuzzies, right? Make memories and help that knowledge stick so that it's not just, what's this, what's this, what's this? Like you don't have to be so serious just to teach something. You can have fun. And the more fun you have, the more likely your child is to remember this. And that brings us to number five, which is um, review, review, review. So kids who have memory issues, processing issues, they really need a lot of extra touches with the information to remember it uh, and to get it in there. So you want to go over letters and sounds like every day, maybe even multiple times a day until they can get it. Um, and then you want to keep using them kind of like a car battery will go dead if you don't keep cranking up your car and using it it'll just you know go dead because it's not being used um, but when you crank it up you use it daily it keeps the battery charged same thing for memory you want to use these letters and sounds so don't just learn them and move on next step would be start making words with them show them how they're used give them a purpose so you know i could put um, you know, H and I and M together and, and have my child read H -M, him, and we can talk about it and use it. You know, we could write, you know, um, this one you can put an S and I and a T together. Can you see that? I hope so it sit so now i'm using these letters and sounds for a reason and that's going to help your child understand why it's important to know them and get practice retrieving those sounds and using them and putting them to good use and you can have them sit when they read the word sit or you know whatever word they're reading you, you can come up with um, things that they can do you can come up with things they can point to whatever um, but have fun again and show them how letters and sounds are used. But that's a great way to review them once they get the basics down and they can recognize them enough. Then you can really start using them, especially those letters that are tricky. Make sure you use them extra and that way they get a lot of extra practice making those sounds. So I hope that helps guys. Um, one thing I've got a book called alpha basics that I wrote. And if you need, you know, sheets for writing the letter, or you need help helping your kids learn to identify words that begin with that letter, 
or um, you know, you just want some extra letter sound work, you could look at that. You could get that and work with them on it. But remember, the best ways are have fun. So if you do worksheets, make sure you're having fun and saying things like, oh, I can't wait to see how you write your letters today. Or, oh, I can't wait to pick out some, um, you know, words that begin with these sounds with you, you know, make it an I spy type game. Can you find any words that begin with that? Or um, one of the pages has find the letter and they have to find the letter in a bunch of letters. So, you know, have fun, do treat it like an I spy. Don't just say, oh, we need to go do work on this, you know, but have fun, present it like a game because kids don't know the difference unless you make it seem not fun and then they won't want to do it. So if you want your kids to get extra practice, look up the Alpha Basics product. It's on my website, um, kidscanreadandwrite.com and is spelled out, um, kids can read and write. Um, it's also, uh, there's a program that includes it, the Black Belt Reading Program includes the Alpha Basics book um, and you can get that when you're working on the letters and sounds section. But that is found at kidscanonlineacademy.com or at kidscanreadandwrite.com. You can get it either place, but it's a little easier to find at kidscanonlineacademy.com. And that program not only helps you cement the um, letters and sounds, I've got videos on the hand signals, how to help your child remember them, all that. Um, but it also goes through the entire reading process. So I take you through learning how to read your first words, CVC words and, and C, uh, vowel consonant words, and how to read words with blends, and then how to read words with all the tricks. And if, if you're needing a guide to help walk you through all of that, um, and you just want something, you know, where somebody's going to actually teach your child and teach you if you don't know it yet, it's a great program. I've spent years making it and now it's finally on the market. So if you need it, um, go to kidscanonlineacademy.com and look for Black Belt Reading. And it's all there for you. You just follow it and it, it will teach your child to read if you go through and do all the things. Um, there are packets to download for each step along the way and you just work through the packets and use the videos for support as needed. And you'll see your child learn to read and write. So that's, that's, I mean, I say that as long as your child is able to learn, I've not seen it not work with anyone who has done it. So hope that helps you. Hope it helps you. If you have questions or you know, you get it and it's not working, contact me so I can help you over the stumbling points. Um, but it's there for anyone who needs help and needs a guide. Uh, needs to know how to work with their child and what to work on and um, just wants it all laid out and done for you. So I spent years of my life so that I could save you years of yours and hopefully your child lots of struggle because it's made for kids who typically struggle, but it's good for anyone. It will teach anyone. I say anyone. I can't promise you anything. You have to do the work. You have to, you know, do what you need to do, but it does take you right down the path. So hopefully that's helpful for you. If it is, go look for it. Um, otherwise, just watch the videos here and, uh, and let me guide you along the way as best I can through videos like these. So hope that helps, guys. Remember, five things you want to do. Cut these down. Don't put so many at once. Just start with maybe three and then build to four, five, six, seven, and slowly add as your child gets comfortable with the ones you've already taught. Second thing, remember, um, help them see the differences in letters by showing them pictures, things they look like, uh, helping, give, helping to give them associations, do hand signals, all that. Third, get tactile. Make sure they're touching it. If they're touchy, you know, feely kids who need to touch and, and have it in their hands, Try those sandpaper letters, writing in shaving cream, um, building Play-Doh letters, whatever. Uh, and don't forget those hand signals. They're really helpful too. And then also create memories by reading, playing, having fun. 
um, doing all the fun things, baking cookies, you know, bathtub letters, refrigerator magnets, just have fun. Like I used to teach my kids while they were, while I was pushing them on the swing, I, I would teach them the tricks that way and say, Oh, do you know what says shh? And we just talk about it as I just push them on the swing and we we're just having conversation, right? It, it was no big deal, but it helped them learn those tricks while we were making memories, while we were having fun. And then finally, review, review, review. If you have a child with memory issues, expect to have to do a lot of review. So while my program will take you down the path, show you exactly what to do, it's up to you to do the review, 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 to work, work, work. You know, you gotta get in somehow, it's not magic. You have to do the work, you have to do the review, but I promise you it will be well worth it because kids who struggle end up having a lot of trauma and we don't want your child to have that trauma. So if you're already seeing it, get on the ball. Don't put it off any longer, don't wait. It's not because it's not developmentally appropriate. Um, you've got to present it in a way that works for your child's brain. And you need to start doing it sooner rather than later because kids who have struggles need more of it, not less of it. And don't give up, you know, don't give up. Usually I can teach kids to um, remember their letters and sounds within two weeks of using these te techniques, sometimes a month, sometimes four weeks, right? But that's in severe cases. So usually within two to four weeks, kids can learn all of their letters and sounds. This is not something you need to spend years on, hopefully, unless your child's just really impaired somehow. Um, this should be a two to four week process. You know, if it's taking over longer than that, you probably need to look at how you're presenting it and see if you can fix any of that. Or if um, your child is profoundly, you know, impacted by some kind of memory or processing issues, you may have a bigger struggle. So in any case, you still have to do it. You still have to get through it. So remember these five tips, hopefully they help. If they're not, let me know what you're doing and I'll try to help you out because I've never seen kids who couldn't learn the letters and sounds as long as they were capable of learning. So I'm not talking about teaching somebody who's not capable of learning or speech or sight or you know something like that, but I'm talking about kids who have average, you know, IQs, but who are struggling for some reason. And um, they might have some memory or processing issues. That's usually the culprit. Uh, but you can get past those with these techniques. So good luck. Let me know how it goes. Contact me if you need more help. You can contact me through either website, kidscanreadandwrite.com or kidscanonlineacademy.com. Good luck. Let's get your kids reading.